Hi guys, the editor-in-chief of British Vogue, Edward Enenfall, has just posted this rather distressing information on his Instagram page. It reads, Today, I was racially profiled by a security guard whilst entering my workplace. As I entered, I was instructed to use the loading bay. Just because our timelines and weekends are returning to normal, we cannot let the world return to how it was. Change needs to happen, and it needs to happen now. This incident only serves to prove, as if further proof were needed, that racism is no respecter of persons. There's been a lot of talk in the press this week about Lewis Hamilton and his stand against racism within Formula One. And some people have been saying, well, what's he got to grumble about? He's from a wealthy family. He's got a very privileged life. He's a multi, multi, multi-millionaire. He doesn't even live in this country, blah, blah, blah. But the truth of the matter is that it doesn't matter how much privilege you think someone has, or it doesn't matter how much money they have. When it comes to racism, particularly racism based on skin colour, black racism, that that's what matters. That you can still be discriminated against whether you are a champion Formula One driver, the editor-in-chief of British Vogue, or anyone doing any job on the planet. And that's the problem. I've done quite a few videos on my channel about the subject of race, and often when I do, I get lots of nasty, hateful comments, as well as some nice comments. And what I find interesting is that some people seem to be under the illusion that for some reason, racism has disappeared from this country, which simply isn't true. Before the pandemic hit, I used to do a lot of comedy gigs. Do you remember those? <laughs> Weren't they hilarious? And I also performed as part of a double act, and my comedy partner was black. And sometimes we'd do gigs and he would experience racism. Now he would take it far better than I would. I used to get quite cross about it. But strange things, like I remember once he was washing his hands in the bathroom before we went on stage, and he's washing his hands, and a white guy came up to him and noticed he was washing his hands, and obviously he's black, his hands are black. Yeah, I know. And uh, he's washing his hands, and the guy said, oh, don't need to do all that washing. It doesn't wash off. Why would you say that? Why would you say that? Another time we were on stage and an audience member pointed at him and said, oh, I remember you. Yeah, 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 I remember you. You're that guy. Yeah, yeah, I gave you my coat when I walked in, implying he was just like a member of staff, you know, working. And it's like, because he's black, he's obviously just working. He couldn't possibly be on stage, blah, blah, blah. Terrible stuff. I've even seen this happen in my own children's lives because my wife is black, my children are mixed, right? And my eldest son has got quite a big afro. I think I've said this in a previous video, but it bears repeating, he's got quite a big afro. And sometimes when we go to events, like children's parties, right? We'll be queuing up to get in, and the parents will be greeting the children, all the white children, giving them a kiss or a hug to say hello. And they'll see my son coming, big afro, dark skin, and instead of giving him a kiss or a hug, they immediately go, high five! Why? Because he has an afro and he's black? He has a high five, he doesn't get a kiss or a hug? What makes him so different? My point is, as you can guess, we should all be treated equally, regardless of the colour of our skin.